Hi everybody, my name is Josh and welcome to Certified Scuba, the place where we talk all things scuba all the time, cover a different topic every week for about 10 minutes or so, answer some questions posed in the responses to the videos that are there, and enlighten those that are out there that might not do scuba diving, or those that are newer to scuba diving, to some of what's available for you in this absolutely awesome sport. It goes without saying that the videos produced here for Certified Scuba are not to be used in place of a dive course or instruction, and they're strictly informational knowledge for people out there looking to understand diving better and some tips and tricks. So please, don't take what we give as gospel. There are experts out there that give you specific training on some of these instances that you might incur. Okay, today's video for Certified Scuba is a very common topic that a lot of people ask dive planning and dive vacations. Where you should go, when you should go, what you should take with you, other things you might not think about and look out for when you're going on your dive trip. Over the next 10-15 minutes or so, we're gonna go over a lot of those details to help you plan the best dive vacation possible. No, planning a vacation on its own can be trouble enough, but when you throw in the mix of scuba diving in there, it can be downright nerve-wracking for a lot of people. Sometimes people think when they're going to go on a dive trip, they're just going to simply book a flight somewhere that seems nice and warm, show up, do some dives, have some fun, and then call it a day. There are a lot of variables that people aren't taking into account. The time of year that you're traveling, are there any other holidays that are going on at that point in time? What are the prices at the resorts and or boats you're looking to dive off of? Do you need some special skills or extra certification associated with that? Or what is the weather going to be like? Is it hurricane season? Is it a rainy season? Things along these lines right there. And sometimes when you're traveling specifically for diving, you might find a cheaper rate at a specific resort, but you have to wonder, okay, if I'm going to be traveling to the Caribbean in the middle of July, early August or September, there's a very valid reason why that that place is going to be cheaper because there's always a chance of rain and or hurricanes at any point in time there. So you have to think about things like that when you're getting ready to do a dive trip. Now as you're preparing for a dive trip, there are a couple of different ways you can go about it. You yourself can be the sole planner as we're in the 21st century. It is now from my watch telling me that it's 2020, so 20 years into the 21st century at this point in time. We all live in the age of the internet with things like Google, Travelocity, lots of different web pages that you can go to check out, figure out the best places to go and dive and when to do it. So that's always an option for you. Option number two, which is a great recommendation of mine, is to link up with your local dive store, find out what trips they have going, and then just simply tag along for a myriad of reasons. We'll cover that a little bit more later as we work through this right here. So if you're planning a dive trip on your own, the biggest and most important thing to take into account is when are you traveling and where are you traveling to? You should always have some research done ahead of time on the ideas and locations that you're looking to go to and understand what that climate is going to be like at that time of year, if there are any religious holidays that are going on, or if it is just the standard spring break, summer break, winter break rush that you'll get inundated with other tourists. So if you're looking to travel when everyone else is at that point in time, Airlines understand and know that you are willing to pay a premium to do that just because you want to get away. So if you're going to be planning a dive trip, you might want to think about doing some off weeks in comparison to what other vacations might be done from other people. A great site I like to use is Google Flights. It's flights.google.com. And what's fantastic about that is about nine, 10 months out, you can look and see what the pricing of a flight is going to be. You can change around your weeks if you want to do that. And you can change around some of your days. You can choose which airlines you want to fly or where you want to fly out of. And then it gives you your best prices and it goes from lowest to highest. Now, so also keep in mind, if you're looking at those least expensive flights, there might be multiple connections. It may take you more than a day to get there. There's a reason why some of these flights can be really cheap. We mentioned how that in North America, if you're traveling in the late summer, early fall time frame, that could be hurricane season in places such as the Caribbean. So dive resorts will typically offer their lowest rates possible this time of year to induce people to still come to the place that could be inundated with rain any day of the week.
Now that we've dealt with some of the basics and we're talking about planning a jive trip on our own, let's take a look at the other option I previously mentioned of traveling with a dive group or a dive store. When you travel with a dive group that is only linked to a scuba store, they typically have somebody set up ahead of time with a dive tour agent, booking agent, uh, to go ahead and plan everything out there for you, flights, places you're looking to go, any additional excursions. So there's an immense value for those of you who just simply want to go out, have fun for a week, not really think about too much else, and just experience some great diving. Typically these group trips will have 10 to 12 people, sometimes a little less, but most dive stores are purposely going to pack as many people in there as possible, up to the number of 12, and there's a very valid reason why. If you are somebody that works with a scuba store, or if you're a common visitor to a store, you might come up with the idea of a dive trip, which is fantastic. What is great about that is if you pack that trip yourself with the 10 of 12 people on there, you get to go for free. Who doesn't want to go on a scuba trip for free? I know I would. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows if you're looking to be that dive leader for a scuba store. First, there's a concern that you actually have to build a trip to get a free trip. Not always easy, especially when some of these trips can be anywhere between $2,600, $3,500, $4,500, for $5,000 if you're going to a really remote location. If you don't fill it, you don't go for free, you still have to pay. But more importantly, when we're talking about dive trips and you being a dive leader, you also have to take on all the responsibility to make sure that those 10, 11, 12 people that you're traveling with are going to have the best time possible. Your job is to ensure that they have the best experience, that they get all the food that they want, that all of their needs are being met, and that starts when you take off from your home location, wherever that might be, and actually even before that. A good example of something a dive leader can run into is missing flights, and if you miss one flight, will you miss your connection flight out of the next place? Will you be stuck in a location for a day, possibly two? These are questions you have to ask yourself and think about logistically when you're planning a dive trip with a store. I one time was on a dive trip to Fiji, which was fantastic. We left our home airport, which is notoriously snowy, during a snowstorm. Made it out okay. I thought to myself that everything was going to be perfect. Next air airport that we landed in, we were stuck there for five hours to begin with, where they delayed our flight, delayed our flight, delayed our flight, eventually canceled our flight, which means we had another flight that we had to get out of on the west coast to get to Fiji. We didn't make that flight that night. And that flight only went out and back every other day. So we were stuck you know, one night in one city, we were stuck another night on the west coast. We had two extra nights that we had to account for when it came to the logistics of where do we need to be when we need to be there. Thankfully though, the person who led this dive tour was really buttoned up and took care of everything for us, had a hotel lined up in the first place that we were stuck, had a hotel lined up in the second place that we were stuck, so that finally when it came to that third day, we were actually able to make that flight out. And not only that, he talked to the dive travel company to ensure that we got all of the days that we were missing in Fiji, which is pretty awesome when you think about it. So that's an example of a fantastic dive leader and some extra things that you would incur if you decide that you want to take on this role right there. But enough of that, let's get back to the topic of going to a dive resort with a scuba store and not thinking about anything. We're not talking about being a dive leader at this point, we're just talking about being one of the 12 people on the boat to enjoy themselves and have a good time. So we talked about this briefly before when we started in the introduction. If you're going on a dive trip, you have to understand where you're going and what you're going to be doing. Is this going to be just simply fun dives, 12, 14, 17, 22 in all? Are you doing a Ligabor? Are you doing a straight dive resort? Is it an all-inclusive dive resort? These are all important questions to know and understand. When you're booking through your scuba store, it's nice to have these questions ready to go rather than just saying, I'm going to sign up for a dive trip and enjoy it. You should realize and understand if you should be nitrox certified, if there are going to be many night dives, if there are going to be wreck dives, if there are going to be plenty of deep dives. Knowing those ranges that you're going to be diving in and knowing where your comfort level already is, is extremely important to understand and know when you're going on these trips. Oftentimes, scuba stores help accommodate this by knowing already what you might be dealing with on these trips, and they'll plan some extra specialty courses along the way for those that want to button up some of their certification and capabilities so they do feel more comfortable when they go on this trip. And then finally, as always, if it's been a little bit, a little bit for a lot of people is six months to a year, if it's been this time since you've actually gotten into the water scuba diving, 
it always is a good idea to stop on in and get a refresher to get familiarized with your gear. Many times when scuba divers take trips, they take them to the least populated and built up areas. So sometimes you might think that you're going to be able to go and take a moped around an island and stop at a local bar. There might not even be a local bar to begin with. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to know and understand what the island actually is all about or the location you're looking to go? If it's built up, if there's nothing, if the resort is really the only thing on the island. These are all important details to take into account when you're planning your scuba diving trip. When you're on the trip, it's also good to know if this is a relatively regimented trip or if you are set up to go and dive when you want to. Some places will have you out on a boat at 8 o'clock in the morning. You're going to do two dives, come back for lunch, enjoy yourselves for a little bit, go back out at 2 in the afternoon, get in a third dive, come back home, eat dinner, and then you can sometimes shore dive or do whatever you want to the rest of the day. Other places, you're on your own time. You can figure out your dives with your buddies whenever you want to. So it's a good idea to know what type of diving you will be doing and if it's going to be relatively intensive diving as well. At its most simple, it's really important to understand what the local currency is. Can you just charge everything to your room? It's also important to understand things along lines like the uh, electrical current there. Do they use the American 120 system? Are you going to be traveling abroad into home? Are you traveling to Latin America or South America where there could be a different system? Important things to know and understand and realize. On this note, a lot of times people travel with adapters for their electronic devices and also converters. Many items these days though come with their own power block, power brick, you know a lot of chargers these days use USB, FR laptops, iPads, these types of items that all have their internal power system. All you need is simply the adapter to go in front of that plug and it plugs into the local wall. Look at this image right here, you can see an example of exactly what this means when you're looking on the side of that small little box that's attached to your device where it shows you 100 to 220 volts and amps that it covers there for you. If you're traveling with those small electronics or slightly larger electronics that needs the converters, you also have to understand the amperage of them. Uh, if you're plugging in a hair dryer into something that's designed to change the voltage on a cell phone, for example, you're going to run into a problem while probably blow that guy out pretty fast. Many of these places that you might be traveling to understand that concept though and put converters right in your room for you or things like a hair dryer, some of those larger electronic devices. So now you're signed up for the trip, you've had a meeting with everybody, you know what the diving is going to be looking like and it's a week and a half before you're leaving and it's time to prepare to actually leave. How do we pack for a scuba diving trip? Well, I'll tell you right out of the gate, less is going to be more. So the lighter you can pack, the better off you will be. My first few dive trips that I took, I'm always big into shooting video and photo. I brought entire bags of just camera equipment with me. The only problem with that is I barely use it because I was on a boat most of the time. And it was really, really heavy. Not exactly conducive for dive travel. The lighter you are, the better you are, okay? There are some specific things that you're going to want to put in your carry-on bag to make sure that you have the most important equipment with you on the dive trip. Now a carry-on bag, you can get a scuba specific one and it will have some compartments there for you for some of your most precious equipment. Or you can use a standard carry-on as well that will also work on a lot of occasions. But the most important things that you need to be bringing with you are number one, your BC, number two, your regulator, and number three, your diving computer. These are the three most key things that are individualized to you and without these, a dive trip is much more taxing if not impossible. With that being said, things that you'll put in your carry-on bag are going to be your wetsuits, your dive skins, you're going to be putting in your fins, masks, snorkel, items like those that are still important, but you can probably find something at the resort that you'd be looking for that gives you what you need if those were ever lost. Now there is one absolutely don't bring me along, there's no point in doing this, and that is weights. So if you have a weight restriction to begin with when you're flying, why do you want to take a quarter to half of that weight and put them into your soft weights? There's absolutely no need for it, and any dive resort that you're going to go to will have that taken care of there for you. I always recommend when you travel, a good item for your carry-on is going to be something along the lines of your laptops, 
your iPads, bring a charger with you as well. Also, if you have a housing for a video camera or a regular camera, it's also important to use that as part of your carry-on as well. Typically, we know we have one carry-on bag and then one additional item. That housing can be used as your additional item. So we talked about the climate. We know exactly what we're going to be facing when we go. So we know if we should be wearing some longer sleeved attire or if it's just shorts, socks, t-shirts. Uh, my next drive trip I'll be taking in a couple of weeks to the Cayman Islands. I've told everybody already, you're going to find me in four or five pairs of shorts, a handful of tank tops, maybe a pair of channels, and that's about it. Everything else is going to be very minimal for what I'll actually need on my trip. You're always going to want to take things like your sunblock, your prescription medication, and then something that I've always found to be very beneficial is Bring some day quail Sudafed, so you'll be doing a lot of multi-day diving over the course of a week, and then drama means for quality motion sickness. I myself am something that usually never gets motion sick, but there have been instances when I've been on a boat and something just didn't sit right with me. I've gotten sick, and it was a very bad three or four hours before everybody was done diving and we were back at the resort where we were supposed to be. One thing that happened though is everyone else got to see some pretty cool fish that you usually don't see. One other thing to keep in mind when you're traveling are weight restrictions within our bags as well, which is always why we want to travel lighter if possible. If you're doing two or three different flights within one day and you're going from larger to smaller planes, that weight restriction on that smaller plane might be greater than what it was when you first took your flight when you first took your flight out of your home airport. So there it is, a relatively comprehensive list of things to take and keep in mind when you're doing a dive trip and how to plan a dive trip right there. Now I know we didn't cover everything, that's for you guys to leave questions and comments on this page right here. As always, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.